says part 13 of link to sql tutorial in this video we'll discuss compiling link queries to improve performance first let's understand what actually happens when a link query is issued the link query that we've got here is going to retrieve a single student whose id is one when this link query is issued link has to parse the expression tree and dynamically generate the required transact sql statements that will be executed against the underlying database this parsing happens every time a link query is issued this overhead can be removed by compiling the link query. To compile a link query, we use compiled query class that's present in system.data.link namespace. Let's look at an example of compiling a link query. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So here I have a console application within this project. We will be making use of the students table. Here is the SQL script to create this table. I'll have the script available on my blog in case you need it. Now to this project, let's add a new item and we want to add link to SQL classes. Let's name this sample. Let's go to Server Explorer, drag and drop students table. Let's go to program.cs file. I have this exact same code already typed, so let's copy that and paste it within the main method. So what's happening here? We are creating an instance of our sample data context class and then here we have got the link query which is going to retrieve a single student whose ID is 1 and finally we are printing that student's first and last name. Let's run the program to make sure we still get the result. All right. Now this link query is not compiled which means you know every time this link query is executed this has to be parsed and then the transact sql statements will have to be dynamically generated on the fly and this parsing takes time so this parsing overhead can be removed by compiling this link query to compile a link query we use compiled query class so let's use a variable let's call this compiled student query equals compiled query. So this compiled query class is present in system.data.link namespace. So let's bring that in. And then this class has got this compile method. So this method is what is going to compile our link query. And if you notice from the IntelliSense, this method expects a func to be passed as a parameter. We discussed what a func is in detail in our C-sharp video series. So let's pass a function now the function that we are going to pass here is going to take two parameters. Now if you look at this link query that we have got here, there are two variable pieces of information. One is the data context object and the other one is the student ID. So we are going to pass those two as parameters. So the first parameter is going to be sample data context. Let's call that data context. And the second parameter is going to be student ID, so integer and let's call the parameter student ID. And this function is going to execute this link query. So let's cut this link query from here and then paste it right here. And then let's format this link query a bit. Now finally we need to close this parenthesis and then a semicolon. Now we have got these two parameters so we can remove these, this and this hard-coded value. So let's replace this db context with this data context variable. And instead of this hard-coded value one, let's pass this parameter. Okay, so this is our compiled query now. Now, this compiled query can actually be used as a function. Look at this, the moment I type compiled um, student query, and then the moment we open up the parenthesis, notice that it is expecting two parameters. You know, the first parameter is of type sample data context and the second parameter is of type integer, the two parameters that we have specified here. So sample data context, we have the instance of that already here. So let's pass that as the first argument. And the second argument is going to be the student ID, which we want to retrieve. So we want to retrieve student ID, um, student with ID one. So if you look at what this returns, it returns a student object. So it takes two parameters in, that is the sample data context and integer, which is the student ID, and returns a student object. And we are printing the student first and last name. Let's run the program and notice that we get Mark Hastings. So this is our compiled query. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.